Hello, I'm Bill Donnelly from Sapphire Technology and today I've come in to talk about the brand new 6000 series of graphics cards. This new family of cards is based on the second generation of DirectX 11 technology from AMD. It's about a year since we first introduced DirectX 11 technology with the HD5870 card. Since then we've introduced a whole family of 5000 series cards that support DirectX 11 and for Windows 7 users bring a lot of new features to the desktop. So the 6000 series builds on that technology with a new generation of architecture that has a lot of special features. The architecture of the 6000 series GPUs from AMD has been optimised to use a smaller transistor count to achieve the same levels of performance. It's also built in their 40 nanometer technology and together with the reduced transistor count and smaller die size gives us much lower power consumption. Amongst the hardware features of the 6000 series is a new tessellation unit. Tessellation is very important for DirectX 11 because it increases the level of detail of what you see on the screen and it can do this dynamically. The tessellation unit in the new series is almost twice the performance of that one in the previous family. Other new features of the 6000 series are improved anti-aliasing capability, including the ability to do it right across a full screen image and not just on details. We also have new levels of anisotropic filtering and those levels can be controlled by a slider in the new version of the Catalyst Control Center. For people who want to watch Blu-ray movies or DVDs on their computer, the 6000 series has a built-in UVD. UVD is a unified video decoder that takes the work of decoding the video stream away from the CPU in the computer and does it on the graphics card, which is a much more efficient way to do it. In the 6000 series, the UVD is the third generation of this type of decoder. For the first time, this supports MVC, which is a multi-view video coding used for Blu-ray 3D. This new generation of cards also supports HDMI 1.4a, which is the latest specification and delivers 7.1 audio as well as stereoscopic 3D output to a suitable TV or monitor. So today I'd like to introduce the first two members of the 6000 series. The first one is the HD6870. The HD6870 has got 1120 stream processors, 56 texture units and delivers an amazing performance in the region of 2 teraflops. And yet all of this, and it uses only 150 watts of power, and with dynamic power management, as little as 19 watts on standby. The second card I'd like to introduce today is the HD6850. The HD6850 has a slightly smaller configuration of 960 stream processors and 48 texture units. It still delivers 1.5 teraflops of performance, and it's doing all of this for a power consumption of around about 127 watts. And again, with dynamic power management, this reduces to about 19 watts on standby. The lower power consumption of this card means that we only need to provide a single 6-pin power connector, making it suitable for an upgrade in a much wider range of systems. Like the previous generation of cards, the HD6800 series supports the multi-screen format known as Ifinity. So this 6850 card that I've got here has two DVI outputs, an HDMI and a display port, and used together they can support up to three screens in Ifinity mode from a single card. On the 6870 we have a new configuration of outputs. We still have the two DVI outputs and one HDMI, but now we have two new mini display port outputs. What this means is that in Ifinity we can now use two of the older style outputs for the first two monitors and two additional monitors using the mini display ports, so a total of four monitors from a single card. The interesting thing about the DisplayPort outputs on this new generation of cards is that they're DisplayPort 1.2 in the hardware. That means that as soon as the drivers become available, we'll actually be able to daisy chain additional monitors to the DisplayPort outputs and give us different monitor configurations. Both of the cards I've shown you also have the connector on for hardware Crossfire, so we can put a second card into the system and accelerate the performance just as before with Crossfire X. The massively parallel processing power of these cards can also be used to accelerate other applications. These include things like video transcoding, the latest generation of browsers have their content accelerated by this process, and there are also plugins for design software like Maya. So this new generation of cards brings exciting levels of performance to all your DirectX 11 applications with lower power consumption and at affordable prices. I'm Bill Donnelly from Sapphire Technology, thank you for watching.